Good evening. So good to see all of you here as we welcome our new shepherd to Mount Olive Lutheran Church, and we've been eagerly awaiting your arrival. And we give thanks to God for the great blessing that he is giving us here. Here, I forgot to take that off. For the great blessing that he's giving us here as he will continue to lead this flock, this family of God, by his mercy and grace in his word and his sacraments, leading us in his truth. So we thank you so much. And we will begin, so let us stand, as we begin our worship of our Lord and Savior in spirit and in truth. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening. Let your light scatter the darkness. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who led your people Israel by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May his word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, for you are merciful and you love your whole creation. And we, your creatures, glorify you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.
Let us pray. Let the incense of our repentant prayer ascend before you, O Lord, and let your loving kindness descend on us, that with purified minds we may sing your praises with the church on earth and the whole heavenly host, and may glorify you forever. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing to his name, for it is pleasant. For the Lord has chosen Jacob for himself. Israel has his own possession. For I know that the Lord is great, and that our Lord is above all gods. O house of Israel, bless the Lord. O house of Aaron, bless the Lord. O house of Levi, bless the Lord. You who fear the Lord, bless the Lord. Blessed be the Lord from Zion, he who dwells in Jerusalem. Praise the Lord.
reading from Isaiah, the 52nd chapter. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who publishes peace, who brings good news of happiness and publishes salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. The voice of your watchmen, they lift up their voice, together they sing for joy. For eye to eye they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you waste places of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations. And all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. O Lord, have mercy on us. A reading from the four, third chapter of 2 Corinthians. Such is the confidence that we have through Christ toward God. Not that we are sufficient in ourselves to claim anything as coming from us, but our sufficiency is from God, who has made us competent to be ministers of a new covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. Now if the ministry of death, carved in letters on stone, came with such glory that the Israelites could not gaze at Moses' face because of its glory, which was being brought to an end, will not the ministry of the Spirit have even more glory? For if there was glory in the ministry of condemnation, the ministry of righteousness must far exceed it in glory. O Lord, have mercy on us. The word of the Lord from the Gospel of John, the 20th chapter. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. If you withhold forgiveness from anyone, it is withheld. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
The portion of Holy Scripture that we focus attention on for this day, the installation of Pastor Michael Schleider as your uh, next pastor here at Mount Olive, is the epistle lesson for the day, especially the first few verses. Uh, Precious words. I'm going to read them once again because they hold so much meaning, especially for those who serve in the office and for anywhere else as well. St. Paul writes, For such is the confidence that we have toward Christ, through Christ toward God, not that we are sufficient in ourselves to claim anything as coming from us, but our sufficiency is from God, who has made us sufficient to be ministers of a new covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, and the Spirit gives life. So far, God's Word. In the name of our Lord and Savior, fellow redeemed people of Mount Olive, brothers in the office of the Holy Ministry, Pastor Schleider and your family. Uh, a powerfully good day to be here. Coming from Arkansas, you get a baptism of snow and you begin to see what Wisconsin is like. <laughs> uh, you have more snow here than we got up north, just north of the city. Uh, Wisconsin has snow in the winter. Just like pastors and churches go together, Wisconsin and snow go together. Pastors are a great blessing to the church. When our Lord Jesus instituted the office of the pastoral ministry, he did so to serve as a blessing for the church. And when he did so, he didn't select the holiest of men. Think back to the apostles. They were far less than holy. They were sinners, one and all. Peter, hmm, you know his story. James, John, sons of thunder, Judas, others. They were normal, ordinary people on the face of this earth. Most were just common, ordinary day laborers. The same is true when it comes to the office of the holy ministry. It's not the personality of the pastor really that is important. It is the word that he proclaims. Martin Luther often times called it the office of the word. The power is in the word. Power is in the sacraments. And then there came along a man by the name of C.F.W. Walther, the first president of our Lutheran church. He led a band of people over from uh, Germany. He wrote a lot about the pastoral office. Uh, one of the paragraphs that I really love is one that I'm going to read right now about the office of the Holy Ministry. He, this comes from a sermon dated, if, well, I'll tell you when it is afterwards, but it sounds like it could be written for today. He says, Behold how great, how broad, how encompassing the task of a preacher is. He is to teach those who are entrusted to him what they should know of for their salvation. He is, he is to admonish them regarding what they are to do. If they have not done it, he is to rebuke them. When they suffer earthly need, he shall assist them in their need. He shall be concerned that the entire congregation and every individual be maintained in holy discipline and order. Where consolation and help are needed, he is to be the good Samaritan of the congregation, ready with mercy. Thus the great task of his office is to see to it that no one in his entire congregation is abandoned or suffers need without assistance. Whether it be in the external or internal matters, in, bo in bodily matters or in spiritual matters. He is to see to it that everyone who belongs to the Holy Brotherhood of Christ is well cared for. He shall receive the whole as much as the individual, the child as much as the elderly, the uneducated as much as the educated, the weak as much as the strong, the fa fallen as much as those who stand, those joyful in God as much as the very deeply troubled, this poor, the poor as much as the rich, the sick as much as the well, the fortunate as much as the unfortunate, outcast, persecuted, the dying as the living, indeed the very dead themselves, that they like Christ would be brought to their rest in burial. All this should be the concern of his house, and this shall be his concern at opportune and inopportune times. In evil and good days, in times of rich earthly blessing, as much as in times of hunger and pestilence, in war and in peace, publicly and privately. C.F.W. Walter proclaimed that in a sermon dated Epiphany 2, 1862. 
a long time ago. But it still describes exactly what the pastoral office is in the church to this day. I was especially struck when I first read the verses, how he talks about pestilence. He had not heard of anything called COVID-19, and neither have we, had we, until about eh, a little more than a year ago. Evil days, we were coasting along pretty good before COVID-19 struck in January, February, March, whichever day you want to choose. And yet the church needs pastors, even in COVID times. One generation passes the torch to another generation, and that's what goes on here at Mount Olive. A retired generation has moved along into retirement, and now a new generation of pastors comes to fill the gap, to stand in the doorway, to be the pastor here. Pastors really don't write their own job description. It's written on the pages of Holy Scripture, written on the church fathers like those of, of C.F.W. Walther and Martin Luther. A pastor is expected to write a, be a, a blessing for everybody who's in the church. Young and old, rich or poor, man or woman, it doesn't matter. As the ordained brothers up front would certainly attest to, the office of the holy ministry is not a 40-hour-a-week position. It's more than that at times. Sometimes many, many more hours than that. It's filled by people who are broken sinners. We're going to talk more about that in a little bit. It can be emotionally draining, spiritually challenging. And on top of that, a pastor is to be an excellent husband, a loving father, a loyal son, a good citizen, a faithful neighbor. Who, who, you, know, you could ask the question, who's up to the demands of such an office, high office in the church? And yet, it is God who's chosen to put that faithful blessing for the church into something like a human being. Paul calls himself a jar of clay. And that's all we all are, just jars of clay, sometimes, oftentimes, cracked and broken. And that's true for your pastor as well. Pastor Schleider, you have served in this sacred office for more than just a handful of years. You're aware of the demands of which we speak, of what, Mar what CFW Walther talked. You know where those, you find strength and passion for the office to continue. It's certainly not in ourselves. Not one of the men up here dressed in white robes with white red stoles today can, has earned the title pastor. Not one of us deserved the title pastor. And yet, because each is a sinner. And yet the Lord through his church has called men, these men, to serve in the church. He has, through you, called Pastor Schleider to be pastor, senior pastor here. The pastoral office is conferred upon men of God's choosing, always in our time, but he's the one who chooses. He's the one who blesses. He's the one who gives. The prayer of the early church was when they replaced Judas, Lord, show us the one you have chosen. And he has. He's guided you, Mount Olive, to Pastor Schleider. That's why I chose these verses for their sermon text today for your inst installation. The most important part here is our sufficiency is of God. Sinful human beings that we are, none of us deserve to be children of God. Sinful human beings that we are, none of us deserve the title of pastor. And yet the Lord qualifies men to serve him as pastor. You see, the, Lord, the office is the Lord's. He, he instituted the office of the holy ministry into which you've been called, now to serve in this place. The church is his. He redeemed it by his blood. The message is his. He caused it to be written on the pages of Holy Scripture. The Lord of the church has made you a competent minister of the new covenant. You are his servant, called to proclaim his saving word. This is God's servant in your midst, people of Mount Olive. The Apostle Paul is without a doubt one of the best examples of what it means to serve as a pastor. He was an apostle, but he also talked about himself as a pastor. His dedication to the gospel message is without question. Listen to the details, the things that he endured for the sake of the gospel. Five times he says, I received at the hands of the Jews 40 lashes minus one. 
Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A day and a night as I was adrift on the sea. On frequent journeys and dangers of rivers, dangers of robbers, dangers of my own people, danger from the Gentiles, danger in the city, danger in the wilderness, danger at sea, danger from false brothers in toil and hardship, through many sleepless nights in hunger and thirst, without food, in cold and exposure. Apart from other things, there is the daily pressure on me of my anxiety for all the churches. When you read those sections about danger, if you're old enough like me, you remember the robot saying, danger, Will Robinson, danger. There is danger for those who serve in the pastoral office. And yet there's great blessings as well. Paul experienced both. He could have, at this point, when he writes these words to the Corinthians, thrown out his chest and and boasted about all the good things he had done for the church. He had planted more churches, more congregations, and more areas, visiting more towns, proclaiming the gospel than any other apostle that we know. But the apostle Paul makes it very plain that his ministry is not about him. Consider his words to the Romans. Paul says, what a wretched man I am. Who will deliver me from this body of death? And then he provides his own answer. Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then I myself serve the law of God with my mind, but with my flesh I serve the law of sin. Paul understands who he is in the great scheme of things. He's a sinner who's fallen short of the glory of God. He's a sinner who was called to repentance on the way to Damascus. He's a sinner into whose heart was placed the seed of the Holy Gospel faith. He's a sinner who Jesus then called to proclaim that message through to the Gentile world, Roman world. And he was blessed wherever he went. Churches were established. Things happened. Good things happened. Likewise, as you know, the office of a Lutheran pastor is really not about you. It's not about me. It's not about them. It's, not a, it's about the church. And it's about the word of God that is proclaimed. It's not about what we want, but there is that temptation to be sinful human beings, to claim what we want, to do what we want. After all, we're sinners, just like the Apostle Paul, just like the people who extended you a call to serve here at Mount Olive. Sinners, one and all. Sometimes that's hard to realize. Sometimes I ask the pastor to turn around and look at the people in the church and say, hey, How many sinners do you see? Or easier, how many holy people do you see? Only those who are washed clean by the blood of the Lamb. Your pastor, new pastor, is much the same. He is a sinner, washed clean by the blood of the Lamb, claimed in the waters of holy baptism, saving faith living in his heart, receiving the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. He's no different than any of you except... Through you, our God has called him to be your pastor. Certified by the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, to be able to to proclaim the gospel, to serve in this blessed office. And you, by the Spirit's guiding, have called him to be here. He left behind Arkansas. I don't think they have near much this much snow in Arkansas. No. My parents lived down there for a while. Yet we're blessed with snow. And better summers, which is good. The church is not about the pastors, as I've said. The church is not a stage for self-advancement. The church is a bride of Christ, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, claimed in the waters of holy baptism. Ministers serve the bride of Christ. Diakonia is sometimes what we're called in the Greek language. Those who serve as table waiters at the banquet of salvation, serving the feasty, wonderful, select foods that bring forgiveness and eternal life, word, sacraments, body, blood. The office is about all of that. Consider what Martin Luther says about the public office, the public ministry. He says, for we must believe and be sure that baptism is not ours, but Christ's. The preaching is not ours, but Christ's. The sacrament is not ours, but Christ's. The keys or the forgiving and retaining of sins are not ours, but Christ's. In short, the offices and sacraments are not ours, but Christ's. 
for he instituted them all and left them to the church to be administered and used to the end of time. And that's what you called this man to do here at Mount Olive. If you look at the Diploma of Vocation, which I think we're going to sign, there are 11 things he is supposed to do. Each one of them centers in the proclamation of the word and the administration of the sacraments according to Christ's institution. It's the word of God in many different settings, in hospitals, in youth groups, in classrooms. Martin Luther says, the whole clerical state are called and established only for the sake of the word of God. In one of our hymns, we say it a bit better. It's easy to remember. Jesus, Jesus, only Jesus, can our heartfelt longings still? Ordained, you've been set apart to fill this wonderful office. Set apart by our Lord Jesus to proclaim his message of salvation to a world that sometimes forgets it. You reaffirm that priority once again this day as you're installed at pastor of Mount Olive. In recent times, oh, it's been challenging and, and, and tough, difficult for, pe for those who serve in this blessed office, no matter where they serve. As you all know, the pandemic has changed everything. Our culture is adrift with all sorts of strange ideas. It's lost its moorings. People as a whole seem to have those itching ears that St. Timothy talks about, never satisfied with the sweet, simple message of the gospel, always straining for something new, a new form of entertainment, a new way of doing something, even if it means rejecting life and believing a lie instead of life. As Christians, we live, we serve our God in an ever-increasing hostile environment almost on every level. For that, that reason, those who serve in this office of, the public, office of the public ministry in these gray and latter days depend on these verses and what these verses say. Our sufficiency is from God. The Lord of the church has made you a competent minister. You prove that by serving him in this new covenant. And you are his servant as you serve these people. People of Mount Olive, he is God's servant as he serves you with word and sacrament. As a servant of our Lord, as a servant of you in this congregation, it's vital to understand just why we need to lean on God. There's a whole myriad of enemies out there who are ready to attack. Enemies that surround us day and night. The evil one would like nothing more than to destroy your ministry. I've seen it happen to very good pastors because they've wandered away, been tempted and fallen. Our Lord would want nothing more than destroy this wonderful congregation and as witness to this community along with its school. The threat is very real. The danger is not just outside at the doorstep. It's right in here as well. Listen to what my Martin Luther talks about. It. He says this way. A Christian should know that he sits in the midst of devils and that the devil is, as, is closer than his own coat or shirt. Yes, closer than his own skin, so that he is, surrounds us, and thus we always have to scuffle and box with him. Though devils all the world should fill, all eager to devour us, the devils are around us. Oh, that we had a champion. Oh, that we had someone who could deliver us from these evil ones that we don't see, but are always there, stirring up contention, driving a wedge between us and our Lord, driving a wedge between us and each other and between us and the church. And we have that. You sing it about it here. Every reformation, though devils all the world should feel, all eager to devour us, we trouble not, we fear no ill. They shall not overpower us. This world's prince may still scowl fierce as he will, but he can harm us none. He's judged. The deed is done. One little word, this little word, can fail him. The Bible is Luther's little word. Holy Scripture, scorned and burned, banned and rejected, the word of our God still is the most powerful force on the face of this earth and always will be. The office that you've been called to occupy here is not so much about the room over there with books and shelves and a nice desk. The office is, means that you are to proclaim this word wherever you go. And 
proclaim the person who's at the center of this word. St. John writes in his first epistle, uh, first gospel, in his gospel, first chapter, I'll get it right yet. And the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory of the one and only of the Father, full of grace and truth. Jesus, Jesus, only Jesus, can our heartfelt longings still. Jesus is the center of this word. He was the word made flesh. That message is really the heart of what the church is about. It's to be the heart of your office as public minister, pastor here in this place. Article 5 of the Augsburg Confession says this, that we may obtain this faith, the ministry of teaching the gospel and administering the sacraments was instituted. For through the word and sacraments as through instruments, the Holy Ghost is given, who works faith when and where it pleases God in them that hear the gospel, to wit that God, not for their own merits, but for Christ's sake, justifies those who believe that they are received into grace for Christ's sake. It's been our heritage as Lutherans from 1517. We've built on this again and again. Pastoral generations, one after the other, have fulfilled their pledge to this bit of our confessions. And you're going to renew that pledge in a short bit, the Augsburg Confession. As you begin your service here and as these, and as these people trust in you as their pastor, they need to know that your commitment is firm. I encourage you to listen to the promises that he makes. It's not that he's sufficient to accomplish anything of his own. As St. Paul writes, our sufficiency, our competence comes from God. The Lord of the church qualifies men to be pastors, to serve him. The office is his. He instituted it. He created it. The message is his. He caused it to be written down on the pages of Holy Scripture. The Lord of the church has made you a competent minister of the gospel. You are his servant, called by this congregation to serve these people, in the stead and by the command of God himself, in the stead and by the command of this congregation. A double-edged responsibility. My prayer for you this day, Pastor Slider, is that our gracious Lord will bless your ministry here amongst this redeemed group of people and bless your ministry amongst this community that surrounds in the blocks around so that others who don't know our Lord's love and forgiveness might be brought to faith much like the Apostle Paul was on the way to Damascus. Serving God and his people is a blessed vocation. Some think it's hard work, but most of us consider it something that we do, and we're glad we can do it. The church actually pays us to do this, to share the gospel, to baptize babies, to bless marriages, to be there when people are in trouble, to stand at the edge of a grave when loved one is laid to rest, waiting the resurrection with the assurance of eternal life as the comfort. Honor that message. Honor your office as you honor your God. Love these people as you love your God, your Lord Jesus. And together, both pastor and people will be blessed. Gathering at the foot of the cross. Word proclaimed, sacraments administered. You will be blessed in great abundance. To his glory. Amen. And then the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. May that guard, keep, and protect your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. I always forget my mask. The installation of a pastor is always one of the high points in my ca- on my calendar, I think, as you've heard. Uh, a high point for the church. A congregation that has gone without a pastor for some time finally gets a new pastor to lead them to serve as a blessing with word and sacrament ministry. 
Uh, listen to these words carefully as we, we work through them. It's an old rite. Beloved in the Lord, through the church's usual order, the Reverend Michael Schleider has been called by the Lord of the Church to be pastor of Mount Olive Lutheran Church and Christian Day School. The Lord be with you. We pray. Almighty God, by your Son, our Savior, you have always given to your church on earth faithful shepherds to guide and feed your flock. Therefore, we pray, make all pastors diligent to preach your holy word and to administer your means of grace and grant your people wisdom to follow in a way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Whenever a pastor is first ordained and then later installed when he accepts a call to another congregation, another place of service like you have to come here, there are certain sections of Holy Scripture that are read to remind him of the importance of his office as he serves here and to remind you as God's people of what the pastoral office is about. You've heard some of it in the sermon, but now you're going to hear more of God's Word. Uh, the first section says, Hear what Holy Scripture says concerning the institution of the office of the Holy Ministry. From Matthew, the 28th chapter, Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always even to the end of the age. The second section. Hear what Holy Scripture says concerning the responsibilities of the office of the Holy Ministry. Two passages. This is how one should regard us, as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required of stewards that they be found trustworthy, from 1 Corinthians chapter 4. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is the judge the living and of the living and the dead, and by the, his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, repu reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching, teaching. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. As for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Take heed to yourself and to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers, to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. Acts chapter 20. Finally, Hear what Holy Scripture says concerning the strength and the promise which God gives to those who serve in the office of the Holy Ministry. Three passages. Continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work, 2 Timothy chapter 3. Let the one who boasts boast in the Lord, for it is not the one who commends himself who is approved, but the one whom the Lord commends. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. 
You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Matthew chapter 5. Dear brother in Christ, the Lord grant that you receive and keep these words in your heart so that you may be strengthened and encouraged in all of your labors. God gathers his church by and around his holy gospel and thereby also grants it growth and increase according to his good pleasure. That this may be done, he has established the office of the holy ministry into which you have been called by the church and have been ordained and consecrated by prayer and the laying on of hands. It is fitting that you should once again acknowledge the responsibilities of this holy office into which you are now to serve as pastor of this congregation. In the presence, therefore, of this congregation before the Lord God, to whom you must give an account, both now and at the last day, I ask you, do you acknowledge that the Lord has called you through his church into the ministry of word and sacrament? I do. Do you believe and confess the canonical books of both the Old and New Testaments to be the inspired word of God and the only infallible rule of faith and practice? Yes, I believe and confess the canonical scriptures to be the inspired word of God and the only infallible rule of faith and practice. Do you believe and confess the three ecumenical creeds, namely the Apostles, the Nicene, and the Athanasian creeds as faithful testimonies to the truth of Holy Scripture, and you reject all of the errors which they condemn? Yes, I believe and confess the three ecumenical creeds because they are in accord with the word of God. I also reject all the errors they condemn. Do you confess the unaltered Augsburg Confession to be a true exposition of Holy Scripture and a correct exhibition of the doctrine of the Evangelical Lutheran Church? And do you confess that the apology of the Augsburg Confession, the small and large catechisms of Dr. Martin Luther, the small called articles, the treatise on the power and primacy of the Pope, and the formula of Concord, as these are contained in the Book of Concord, are also in agreement with this one scriptural faith? Yes, I make these confessions my own because they are in accord with the Word of God. Do you promise, do you promise that you will perform the duties of your office in accordance with these confessions, and that all of your preaching and teaching and your administration of the sacraments will be in conformity with Scripture, with Holy Scripture, and with these confessions? Yes, I promise with the help of God. Will you faithfully instruct both young and old in the chief articles of Christian doctrine? Will you forgive the sins of those who repent, and will you promise never to divulge the sins confessed to you? Will you minister faithfully to the sick and dying, and will you demonstrate to the church a constant and ready ministry centered in the gospel? Will you admonish and encourage the people to a lively confidence in Christ and in holy living? Yes, I will, with the help of God. Finally, will you honor and adorn the office of the holy ministry with a holy life? Will you be diligent in the study of Holy Scripture and the confessions? And will you be constant in prayer for those under your pastoral care? I will, the Lord helping me through the power and grace of his Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, Holy Scripture says, Obey your leaders and submit to their authority. They keep watch over you as men who must give an account. Obey them so that their work will be a joy and not a burden, for that would be of no advantage to you. You have heard the pro solemn promise of him called to be your pastor. Will you receive him? Show him that love, honor, and obedience in the Lord that you owe the shepherd and teacher placed over you by our Lord Jesus. Will you support him by your gifts and pray for him always? Then in all of his labors he may retain a cheerful spirit and that his ministry among you may be abundantly blessed? If so, then answer, we will with the help of God. We will with the help of God. Will you honor and uphold your pastor as he serves Christ in all of his God-pleasing responsibilities? Will you aid him as he cares for his family? Will you be diligent to put the best construction on everything, recognizing that love covers over a multitude of sins? If so, then answer, we will with the help of God. Reverend Michael Schleider, are you ready and willing to assume this public trust and responsibility? I am. 
Reverend Michael Schleider, I install you as pastor of Mount Olive Lutheran Church and Christian Day School. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now may the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good that you may do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please stand as we pray. I think the prayer is printed on page 10 the bottom. Merciful God and Father, you have graciously promised that through the preaching of Christ crucified, those who believe in him will be saved. By your Holy Spirit, grant grace to Michael, whom you've given to be pastor of this congregation. Grant him readiness and steadfastness in this ministry, patience, understanding, and great zeal. Support and strengthen him in your service that by your word, your church may be built and increased. Through your son, our great high priest, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and most merciful God and Father, through your only begotten Son, Jesus, you have established your church to be a temple and dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. We give thanks that you continue to provide shepherds to feed and serve your flock in which you have made and in which the Holy Spirit has made them overseers. We humbly implore you ever to strengthen the labor, your lab labors of your ministers and through their ministry of word and sacrament, your people may increase in their knowledge and service and grow up into him who is the head, even Jesus Christ, to whom be glory with you and the Holy Spirit, to whom be glory both now and forever. Amen. Go, therefore. You can stand. Go, therefore, and be shepherd of Mount Olive's flock. Preach the word of God. Administer the holy sacrament. Offer prayer for the faithful, instruct, watch over, and guide the flock amongst which the Holy Spirit has placed you. Do it not for earthly gain, but with great joy, for you have not been called to lordship, but to serve his flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive a crown of glory that will never pass away. The almighty and most merciful God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you now and always. Amen. Amen. People of Mount Olive, it's my pleasure to present to you your new pastor, Pastor Michael Schleider. Thank you.
we confess together our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in Merciful God, we humbly implore you to cast the bright beams of your light upon your church, that we, being instructed by the doctrine of the blessed apostles, may walk in the light of your truth and finally attain to the light of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A great physician of body and soul, bless the work of our medical professionals and heal our land of the current plague, that we may worship you and study your word together unhindered. We beg you to give relief to those who have been suffering under this pandemic. Please give wisdom to the leaders in our government. Also guard those who are serving in our military here and abroad and bless their work that our freedoms will be safeguarded. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gracious Lord, send your angels to guard and protect those traveling today and give them safe passages back to their homes. Also keep safe those who serve in emergency personnel in these difficult conditions. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Glory, honor, and praise be to you, Lord, for all the mercy and faithfulness you have shown to this congregation. Your word has obviously not returned to you void, but you have gathered here a people that knows you, fears you, and gratefully loves you in response to all that you have done for us in Christ. Bless your word in times to come, that as we work together to reach our community with the gospel, we may be preserved in your grace, that the erring would be brought back into your fold, and that more souls may be converted to you. Gather your people as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, 
and shelter your congregation with your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. official. He's signing the document, the call document. Good evening. It is my distinct privilege to welcome you all here tonight. Welcome members and congregants of Mount Olive Lutheran Church and Day School. Welcome, President Willie. Welcome, Kenda Rosebrock. Welcome to Brothers of the Pastoral Office here with us this evening. And most importantly, welcome to you, Pastor Slider, Kimberly, and your family. In Romans 15, we are offered an entreaty. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. It is a time of joy at Mount Olive today. We are grateful for the installation that, was, that memorializes our leading by a new shepherd here tonight. We are grateful to Pastor Slider for accepting this call. We welcome both he and his family, and we pray for their ministry here at Mount Olive. While we are not complete strangers, Mount Olive and the Schleiders are new to one another. And as President Willie reminded us, what precedes an installation is a vacancy. On this point, I will be remiss not to be thankful and offer thanks to Canna Rosebrock for his steadfast leadership during this time of vacancy, to Pastor Shim for his time in offering us his service of our pulpit, to Pastor Mummy, and to those many else who have served us here during this time of vacancy. So too, I'd ask that we all keep in our thoughts and our prayers the congregation and school that Pat the Schleiders leave behind as they seek to be led by a new shepherd as well. I am struck as many times as I've been involved in call processes, how God works in leading teachers and administrators to schools and pastors to congregations. It's a narrowly averted disaster, I think, each and every time. And thankfully, uh, we don't do it on our own, as we heard today in our readings, but led by an ably, ably led call committee and a discerning pastor, here we are tonight. Because of this, I hope that the Schleiders come to find what I find in this congregation and the joy and the boundless opportunity of the ministry here, not only in our place in this Lutheran faith and in the synod, the district, and this community, 
uh, but with respect to our school mission and the opportunities that abound here. I also want to ask the congregation to join with me in offered fervent prayers to encourage and pray for Pastor and Mrs. Schleider to support them in their ministry here at Mount Olive and to be open-minded and open-hearted as we make our way forward. The Lord makes known to us the path in this life. In the Lord's presence, there is fullness of joy. And at the right hand of God the Father are pleasures forevermore. Thank you very much, and welcome, Pastor Slider. It's great to be here, simply put. It's a, it's a joy to begin my ministry among such friendly and loving people. I'm overwhelmed by the show of support that you've already showed me, the countless cards, the countless letters of both adults and children alike. It's almost enough to make a grown man cry, quite frankly. I'm eager to serve you, and I'm eager to reciprocate that love as soon as I can. Thank you very, very much. <laughs> 